Hi, I'm Johnny. You're watching a view to a grill, and today we're building a kettle cart for the 22 inch Weber kettle. Let's get started. Get off of there. Move. Let's get real. Well, there it is. Brand new premium Weber kettle. I think that's the middle of the road model. So what I'm doing here is just laying everything out, making sure everything fits. The darker pieces of wood are the tabletop and it's Epe. The lighter pieces of wood is just regular run-of-the-mill knotty pine. Each one of these are one by six by six foot. The first thing I'm going to do is square off one end from each one of these boards for the bottom shelf of the cart. The Epay is going to give you a really ultra modern look and the knotty pine is rustic. So I like the not only the contrast of color but I also like the contrast in style. You have kind of the country knotty pine but yet that really modern look and feel of the Epay. Now here I've taken my measurements and I'm just cutting everything to length. Those 1x4s are the runners and these pieces are the cross boards that are going to support the pine for the bottom shelf. Once you have all the pieces cut you can go ahead and put the bottom shelf together. So we're going to need some clamps some deck screws and those two drills that I have. What I'm doing there is just putting in some pocket holes in the uh, cross boards just to hide them a little better. Give it a quick sanding, knock off some of the uh, tear off from the cross cuts just so that we can get nice tight fits. I'm going to also use those clamps to prevent the boards from walking while we screw them together. Uh, notice I'm using my speed square and my uh, measuring tape. I'm making sure everything is square, everything is tight, so that uh, we can keep this as square as possible because that's going to be real important later when we start putting this together. Now I'm just going to do a quick dry fit to make sure everything is uh, fitting properly. Here I'm just using some clamps to uh, get it off the ground. It just makes it easier for me to work with. Again, clamps are your friend. So the more of those you have, the better off you'll be. It keeps everything nice and tight while you're working with it. Notice I'm using my drill to drill pilot holes. Now I'm using a drill bit that has a, a countersink, um, I don't know, it's a countersink bit. So when I drill it in, there's a little pocket for the head of the screw to go in and remain flush with the top of the shelf. Also, it's very important to use uh, pilot holes because you're so close to the edge of that wood, uh, you don't want to split it. So the pilot holes help you prevent that. Now, that long clamp I'm using because there's a slight uh, bend in the wood and I was able to clamp the gap shut using the long clamp. So uh, the more clamps you have to help you, it's every single clamp is like an extra pair of hands. Here I'm cutting the legs. So I'm going to want the tabletop to be 32 inches off the ground. So we just want the height of the caster plus the length of the board to be 32 inches. There was a few screws I forgot, so I went ahead and put those in. And there you have it. There's the bottom shelf of the cart right before my battery died. Coming up right about here. Just to catch you up what I've done. So you can see the, um, the tabletop support is done. 
Those are 1x4s and 2x4s. The frame is made out of a 1x4 and that H or that I structure in the middle is a 2x4s. The sides of the H structure is what's going to hold up the kettle. That middle brace in the H is actually just there for support so that when I um, when I route out the circle or the hole for the kettle, the router won't fall through the table as I get to the end of uh, the routing task. So that's all that's there for. It's a temporary structure and it will come out as you will see later. I wasn't sure which way I was going to go, whether I was going to attach the legs to the bottom shelf or attach the legs to the tabletop first. So I went ahead and attached them to the tabletop first and now I am attaching them to the bottom shelf. Again, using clamps to help me keep everything straight, everything square, um, always keeping everything tight so that again whenever I drill and screw none of the uh, pieces walk away from each other and everything remains square. You see me measuring the corner to corner to see the distance between each one. So a way I can tell if something is square as I go diagonally. I measure one corner to one corner and then I measure the opposite corners and hopefully they're either the same or really close. These were just under that length right there was just under a quarter of an inch off and that's pretty good because you're working with imperfect material here wood is not going to be perfectly straight so if you're within less than a quarter of an inch i, I say you're doing pretty good yeah as they say that's good enough for a rock and roll now i'm attaching the tabletop so the first board is my lead board I want that board to be as straight as possible. Once it's, or once I determine the straightest board, I'm going to go ahead and attach it. Now this will allow me to make sure that all the other boards are straight because they're not perfectly straight either. And that's why you see me using these clamps here. I'm using those clamps to close the gaps between each one of those boards as best as I possibly can. And I can do this all because I used the straightest board I had as the very first board that I put on the tabletop. Now that I have all the boards as straight as possible, I'm going to go ahead and mark out the lines where the screws are going to be screwed and make sure they're right over the top of that cross board that's um, supporting the tabletop. I use my combination square to measure the overhang just for uniformity. Once I have everything marked and square, um, I go ahead and start drilling the pilot holes. Now for those of you who have never worked with ePay, this is a ultra hard wood and it is rough on your tools. It's beautiful but it will break your tools. If you watch closely, you will see me breaking drill bits. Now the video is going really fast right now, so you may not be able to see it, but I do, I, in that last clip, I broke, I think two drill bits, and in this clip, you're gonna see me break another one. Once I had everything marked and pre-drilled, I went ahead and disassembled the tabletop to do this next step. What you see me doing here is drilling pilot holes through the cross bracing underneath the tabletop into the Ipe wood, um, just to, I guess just to anchor them down. So. We want as little play in that uh, board as possible. And I do this all the way through. The reason why I do it one at a time is so that I can 
clamp them down as you see so that uh, whenever I screw them from underneath that it won't push the board out. The clamps hold the, uh, the tabletop down so that uh, when I do screw them in from the back side they'll stay as tight as possible against that, that uh, cross support. Now you just notice I broke a drill bit and uh, luckily I went to Lowe's or Home Depot earlier that day and I bought two more packs of them <laughs> because uh, I knew this was going to happen. I've done this before. If you've seen my other cooking videos, you see the actual cart that I cook on. Now that's a 26 inch Weber kettle, so the it's a lot bigger table. But when I built that, I went through four or five drill bits that day also. These clamps are allowing me to take the gap out of um, the board. So when those two pieces of wood are put together, there's a slight gap in between them. And those clamps let me uh, bring it in, bring in the wood uh, tight enough so that the gaps aren't as noticeable. Now they're always going to be there. This isn't supposed to be a watertight uh, tabletop. It's going to be, you know, generally left outdoors, not directly in the weather, but it can be left on your patio, your covered patio, or in your garage. And whenever you're going to use it, you just wheel it in and out. So it's not meant to be out in the direct weather. I am using deck screws for the underside of this tabletop. Now, on the top of the tabletop, I'm using stainless steel screws with uh, square square heads or the square headed bits um, they're just I'm only doing that because they're just nicer uh, I don't think the um, the deck screws look nice and since you're going to be able to see those I just went with a, a nicer screw on a side note I'm not giving any measurements right now at the end of the video when we're done I plan on walking around the table with the measuring tape and showing you all the exact dimensions of the kettle cart. And one thing I didn't mention earlier, the reason why we're going with um, one by sixes for the bottom shelf and the tabletop is because for the 22 inch kettle, they work out perfectly. You won't have to do any long rips on your one by sixes to get all of this to fit together. Notice that the legs go on the inside of the tabletop, but the outside of the bottom shelf. Since we're doing that, and uh, I actually planned it that way, we won't have to rip any of these boards uh, long ways. Now I'm just putting in some cross bracing, on uh, corner bracing on uh, where the um, kettle is going to sit. I put two more, that T-shaped uh, bracing is just some additional bracing so that when I do the router and cut that hole out, that my router won't fall through. Because the center is going to be somewhere on that T-shape. Alright, and there it is. Now I left the edges rough on both the left and right side here. Uh, later on, we're going to uh, get my circular saw out and square off the ends of the table. Now, I'm just marking out the uh, where the 2x4s underneath are so that I can get the center of that square that I just created. I'm just using my framing square as a straight edge. Doing both sides, finding the center. Uh, Again, measuring twice, and hopefully uh, only have one, you know, measuring twice, cutting once, because I literally only have one shot to get this hole right. So that's why you see me measuring a lot. All right, now I'm satisfied with where 
the center is. I think I got it. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a little hole so I don't lose it. And start prepping my jig that I'm going to use with my router to cut a perfect circle hole. That is the same jig I used to cut the hole for my 26 inch Weber kettle. So here I'm just making sure I'm in the center, although it's the same jig, so it has to be centered, right? But I'm going to make sure anyway. Uh, the towel is just there so I can see my pencil line better. Um, it was kind of dirty, so I wiped it off. Using my combination square ruler since it's straight. Um, here I'm really just, again, measuring, measuring, measuring. Even though it says it's a 22 inch kettle, for some reason I didn't believe it, so I went and got it and measured it. Now, I'm measuring out 11 and a little bit inches from the center of the router hole to the hole that I just drilled. So the hole for the Weber kettle, once it's routed out, will probably be about 23 inches, maybe 23 and a quarter which is going to be perfect. You don't want it too tight because you don't want the metal sitting on the wood. Uh, you want some air to be able to flow in between your kettle and the wood. Uh, your wood is not going to catch on fire if you're worried about that unless you actually pour some coals in it. Um, it just won't get hot enough. Now actually uh, I've got about four hours into this build so far and I'm just setting up for the next day because this was a good stopping point for the day and uh, you know we'll continue. Now there I figured out that I forgot to put two screws in uh, so there you go. Hey I'm not perfect. Alright let's put up for the day and we'll start again tomorrow. Here we're just going to get set up for the router. I've already drilled the center point of where the kettle is going to go. Um, as you can see, I attached the router to the jig that I'm going to use. Also, I want to point out that um, on the jig, I have these felt pieces of uh, these felt stickers on the bottom of that. That allows me to go in a circle really smoothly. It uh, just slides across the top. This is going to take several passes. I'm going about, oh man, an eighth of an inch. Sometimes more, sometimes less. That's how deep I'm going for every cut. This wood is so hard that I don't want to take a chance on breaking the router bit. Remember, I've already broken several screws and several drill bits. So we're just going to take it easy. Go, and, like I said, about an eighth of an inch or maybe a little more. And uh, take our time. Make sure that the cut is smooth. And uh, just go slow. Now, if you remember, I put the bracing on the bottom side of the tabletop just so that I can make sure that I have a solid foundation for the router. Well, I forgot to screw them in from underneath. Luckily, uh, just having that T-bracing underneath was good enough and I didn't screw anything up. So uh, the test fit was good and it looks like we're good to go uh, right after a little light sanding. Now we're just going to get this set up to go ahead and screw the casters on the bottom. So we'll get it flipped over. Uh, here I am not measuring. I'm just kind of eyeballing it uh, for the best spot to screw those casters into. Now as a by the way, that's the kind of uh, countersink bit I've been using. Now you notice on my impact drill, I have uh, a set of drivers to make this job a lot easier. 
I mean, you could use a ratchet, but don't do that to yourself. Go get um, some impact uh, sockets that will attach to your impact drill if you have one. I mean, if you don't have one, then go ahead and break out the ratchet. You'll be there for a while, but it'll get done. But having that um, impact drill with the ratchet really makes short work of getting those uh, casters installed. I was using 3 inch uh, screws so you can imagine how long it would take to get that done with with just a ratchet. Here I decided that I needed some more cross bracing for the bottom shelf. I wanted the uh, the boards uh, for the shelf to sit a little better um, so I decided to go ahead and add some more cross bracing now I did the uh, pocket hole thing again with my drill um, and I only did uh, only screwed in the bottom part now once we flip it over we'll have eight screws along the top of that so you really don't need to have two screws on each side for the 2x4. Okay, once I got those installed, I went ahead and got uh, my water sealer. I'm using Thompson's water sealer. And I like to put it in a spray bottle and just spray it all around as best as I can into the corners and just kind of let it seep in. Get a rag and just kind of even it out a little bit, wiping it down. Now I'm not trying to wipe it off because I want as much as that ceiling on the bottom as I can get. So I put it on pretty thick on the underside of the Weber cart. Here I'm just finishing up the top of the shelf. Screwing in the screws where I installed those extra two pieces of uh, cross bracing using my combination square to make sure everything is straight using my countersink bit to uh, make sure I don't split the wood as I'm screwing in the um, deck screws. I also want to make sure that um, I've screwed in all of the screws that I need to. When that was turned over some of those screws were hard for me to get to but now that there's a hole in the top of the table, I can go and make sure that all the screws are tight. Um, I did another test fit to make sure that the kettle was going to fit like it was supposed to. Now that I'm sure that everything fits like it's supposed to and all the cross bracing is screwed in properly, I'm going to go ahead and install eight of the little L brackets that uh, I bought from Home Depot. These are, this is what's going to hold the kettle up and away from the sides. Now that hole is not an exact fit for the kettle. There's probably about a half an inch, maybe a little more, of a gap all the way around. That's just to allow some airflow around the outside of the kettle. To keep the heat away from the wood the best we can. Once those are all installed we just flip it back over and test fit the kettle again and it turned out to be perfect. In this shot you can see uh, the gap that I was talking about and it was also kind of nice of Home Depot to be selling the black L clips. I'd never seen them before and hey I saw them on the shelf and grabbed them up. Here we're just going to clean up both ends of the table. I'm just using my framing square to cut off the least amount of material I can on this side. I'm just going to use my Craig sled and my circular saw for this. That Craig sled has a piece of rubbery material on the underside. So once you set it down, it really stays put. It's pretty nice. Now here, 
there's a little piece of aluminum that's keeping me from going forward so I just powered through it and I'm going to have to clean that up later. So once we have that side done we can get to the other side, square it off, uh, cut the least amount off on this side also, make sure your line's straight, put the sled down, circular saw on top, and just rip away. Squaring those up is really easy with the sled. So now it's time for a sanding. I'm going to start off with an 80 grit uh, sandpaper. Starting off with 80 grit may be a little bit overkill but I always like to start rough and in smooth. It also allows me to take all those markings off that I did with the pencil in order to you know make sure all my screws were aligned and the uh, when I was finding the center where the wherever kettle was going to go. I want to give a good sanding to the tabletop as well as the bottom shelf because we're going to seal everything and plus later we're going to put a few coats of polyurethane on. So everything needs to be well sanded, smooth, clean, and ready to go. So here comes the sealant again that is Thompson's water seal and I'm just spraying everything down and then I'll come back and wipe it off and look at that color it really brings out the color of the wood it's beautiful that's that epe it's nice beautiful wood and look at the contrast the light color of the pine against that darker wood color it I think it's beautiful now that everything's dry I'm going to give it a light sanding with 220 make sure the tabletop is clean and everywhere is clean and then we're just going to put on a few coats of spray polyurethane right out of the can now this uh, kettle cart it's going to take this whole can I ended up spraying four coats of this polyurethane on uh, the entire table and then once that's done I stop for the night to make sure everything is uh, dry for tomorrow morning the four coats now I don't know if you noticed but I sprayed in all four directions so I started off on one side sprayed it went to the other side sprayed it and went in four directions to make sure that there was even coverage and here we go this is the finished product with the Weber kettle installed as you can see it came out beautifully and uh, I'll just shut up now and let you take a look at it
Thank you for watching a view to a grill. I hope you try to build your own Weber cart. I'll see you next time.